In this video, we will show you how to care for your intraperitoneal, or IP, catheter. This is a non-tunneled intraperitoneal catheter. We will also review common concerns or issues and how to troubleshoot them. On the day of the procedure, the hospital will provide you with a starter pack of supplies for dressing changes. If you need additional supplies, you can buy them from a medical supply company. The supplies include liquid soap. This can be Hibiclins or unscented soap. Two packages of four inch by four inch gauze pads. One optional package of two inch by two inch gauze. Four inch cover roll tape, which is the Metapore cloth tape or Covaderm adhesive dressing a resealable plastic bag to dispose of the old dressing and used supplies, and disposable gloves. You will also need warm tap water for the cleaning process. Your catheter supplies include a CTU-30 connecting tube, a drainage bag for fluid removal with measurements, and a Lorilock cap. Your IP catheter needs to be cleaned every other day or when it becomes soiled. You may shower with the site uncovered seven to 10 days after your procedure. Do not shower with the site uncovered if the site is red or has drainage. Use mild soap and water in the shower to clean the insertion site. Cover the site with a gauze pad after you dry off. Do not swim or submerge your catheter in water. Follow these instructions to clean your catheter. Wash your hands with soap and water. Gather your supplies and place them on a clean, dry surface. Put on a pair of gloves. Remove the old dressing while supporting the tubing. Throw the old dressing and gloves away in a resealable plastic bag. If you have stitches, look at them to make sure they are still holding. Inspect the catheter insertion site and surrounding area for redness, warmth, swelling, drainage, or a bad odor. If any of these symptoms are present, or if your stitches are not intact, contact your healthcare team. If the tubing has a Lora lock, check the cap on the stopcock to make sure it is tight. Put on a new pair of clean gloves. Open two packs of the 4-inch by 4-inch gauze packages. Pour the liquid soap over the two pads in one of the packages. Next, pour warm tap water over two pads in the other package. Take out one gauze pad and clean the catheter site with the liquid soap. Work in a circular motion, moving from the catheter site outward. Repeat with the second gauze pad. Take out one gauze pad soaked with water. Using the same circular motion, clean the soap from the catheter site. Repeat with the second gauze pad. Discard all gauze pads in the resealable plastic bag. Pat the area dry with a clean four by four inch gauze pad. Place this gauze in the plastic bag. Place either a two inch by two inch or a four inch by four inch gauze pad over the catheter site. If using a four inch by four inch pad, fold the pad in half. With the folded edge up, place it under the tube. Fold the other four inch by four inch pad the same way and place it over the tube. Cover the gauze with a piece of the cover roll tape or Covaderm. Take off the gloves and place them in the plastic bag and seal it. Place the bag in a trash can. Then, wash your hands with soap and water. Next, you will learn how to clean the bag. You need to empty and clean the drainage bag daily. Use gloves when changing dressing, tubes, or bags. Replace the bags at least once a month or more often if an odor is present. The bags can be cleaned with a bleach and water solution. Mix 150 milliliters of water with one tablespoon of bleach. Swish the solution around in the bag and dispose the solution in the toilet. 
If you experience decreased fluid drainage or a leak, there may be debris or a block in the catheter. To correct the problem, use a 10 milliliter syringe with saline to flush the tube. Be sure to flush with a moderate amount of force to remove the blockage. If you have leakage in your catheter, but you still have adequate drainage, call your primary care team. You may need to remove more fluid. Call your doctor or interventional radiology if you have a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius or higher, new or worsening pain or discomfort around the catheter site, redness, swelling, or warmth around the catheter site. The catheter is pulled out from the skin. Leaking around the catheter site or a continued decrease in the drainage amount despite flushing attempts. Breakage or holes in the catheter or the tube stops draining completely. Call your doctor if you have significant abdominal pain after fluid is removed. You may have an infection called peritonitis. This is an inflammation of the lining protecting the abdomen and internal organs. Call your doctor if you feel lightheaded or dizzy. Your blood pressure may be too low. This occurs when too much fluid is removed. Your primary care team will let you know how much fluid to remove each day. Let your care team know if you notice leaking around the catheter site or continued decrease in the drainage amount despite flushing attempts. If you have any questions or concerns, talk with your doctor or call Interventional Radiology at 713-563-7900.